The five wizards of Middle-earth all had their own characteristics and strengths, and Radagast the Brown was known for his connection with nature, the wildlife and creatures. Many readers wonder what his mission was, whether he failed at it, and what was his final fate. Hello friends, it's Carl here, and today I seek to unravel these mysteries as we delve into the history and character of Radagast the Brown. So the wizards were Maiar spirits, angelic-like beings that served the valor. As Sauron grew in power, the Valor decided to send some of these Maiar spirits to Middle-earth, taking the forms of old men with their powers diminished so that they could guide and help the free people through wisdom rather than strength. Now in total, there were five wizards and they were chosen by different members of the Valor. For example, Saruman was chosen by Aule, the Valor of Smithing, while Radagast was chosen by Yavanna the valor that is often associated with nature and the earth. Though she picked him, we're told that she begged Saruman to take Radagast with him and that Saruman was obliged to do so since Yavanna was the wife of Aule, the valor that Saruman served. This seems odd why Yavanna had to beg Saruman and Christopher Tolkien said that there doesn't seem to be any hint of an explanation for this, though I thought to include it for completion's sake and because it might play a part once we discuss his relationship with Saruman later on in this video. Now the wizards arrived in Middle-earth around the year 1000 of the Third Age. They all had the same collective mission, to unite and inspire the free people against Sauron. The wizards could try to do this in different ways, according to their own individual strengths, and Radagast might have tried to fulfill his objective at first, though it seems he eventually failed, for we're told, Indeed, of all this story, one only remained faithful, and he was the last comer. For Radagast, the fort became enamored of the many beasts and birds that dwell in Middle-earth, and forsook elves and men, and spent his days among the wild creatures. Now Radagast eventually settled down for a while in a place called Rosgobel, located on the southern borders of Mirkwood, between the Karok and the Old Forest Road. We're not told whether he lived here alone or if it was some village. Perhaps it was a settlement of the woodsmen of Mirkwood and Radagast mingled among them. Now Rosgobel was quite close to the Karok, an area where Bayorn often spent his time at. It's possible that this is how Bayorn and Radagast knew each other, for Bayorn says, Yes, not a bad fellow as wizards go, I believe. I used to see him now and again. The next time we see Radagast is during the events of the War of the Ring. After Gandalf left the Shire, he rode along the Greenway and he saw a traveller sitting besides the road. This was Radagast and he hadn't seen or spoken to Gandalf for many years. Radagast told him that he had been looking for him and that he bore evil news. He said that the Nazgul were active again and that they appeared as riders cloaked in black as they searched and asked for news of a land called the Shire. This troubled Gandalf immensely, and he asked Radagast, Who told you, and who sent you? To which Radagast responded that Saruman had sent him, and that he told him to say that if Gandalf wanted Saruman's help, he should seek his aid at once, before it's too late. Gandalf then decided to do so, and he asked Radagast to send out messages to all the beasts and birds that were his friends, telling them to bring any news that they hear concerning Sauron's forces to Gandalf at Ortank. Radagast accepts this proposition and he rides off towards Mirkwood. When Gandalf met Saruman, Saruman couldn't hide his scorn towards Radagast, laughing and saying, Radagast the bird tamer, Radagast the simple, Radagast the fool. This shows what little respect Saruman had for him, and Christopher Tolkien suggests that this could be due to Radagast's unwelcome company when Saruman was obliged to take Radagast with him to Middle-earth. After Saruman trapped Gandalf on the pinnacle of Ortang, Gandalf feared that Radagast might have fallen to Sauron's influence also, though in fact he had remained faithful and honest and knew nothing of Saruman's deceit. This would be the cause behind Saruman's undoing, for Radagast had asked the eagles to bring news of their travels and the things they saw to Gandalf, and Gwahir the Windlord travelled to Ortang where he found and rescued Gandalf. Following these events, Radagast is never seen again and his fate is rather ambiguous. We're not sure what happened to him, though after the Council of Elrond, scouts were sent throughout the lands and some of these entered Mirkwood and passed by Rosgobel, the home of Radagast, yet we're told that he was not there. 
Whether he was imprisoned, slain, or if he managed to survive throughout the War of the Ring is uncertain, though it seems that he never returned to Valinor, for a poem in the Unfinished Tale says, Of the five that came from a far country, one only returned, others never again. I'd like to believe that he survived and was happy to remain in Middle-earth among the beasts and nature that he loved so much. It's possible that since he failed his mission, he wouldn't be allowed to return to Valinor, though I do feel it's a bit unfair because considering his origin, being a servant of Yavanna, I think it might have made him more prone to turning away from his objective and focusing on nature instead. I think that through the character of Radagast, Tolkien wanted to give the message that inaction was a choice in itself and a poor decision. I feel it ties in quite well with the famous quote, that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. Anyway, just to be clear, this is my own speculation and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Now I'd like to discuss the meaning behind his name and his powers and capabilities. So in Tolkien's earliest writings, Radagast meant tender of beasts in the language of Numenor, though in a later note he said that the name Radagast was derived from the men of the Vales of the Anduin. This could imply that Radagast helped or interacted with these people since they were familiar with him. Being a Maiar spirit, there's no doubt that he was powerful, however it seems that compared to Gandalf and Saruman, he is presented as a person of much less power and wisdom. He's described as being a master of shapes and changers of hue, which I feel implies that he could shapeshift and cast spells of camouflage. It is also said that he had a lot of knowledge concerning herbs and beasts, which shouldn't come as a surprise considering that he was a Maiar spirit that served Yavanna and spent his time surrounded by nature. Anyway friends, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you can, leave a like, cause it helps this channel immensely and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we can once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.